What is up my Beta Ray brothers and sisters? Beta Ray Jim here with my very first ever Beta Ray view. And where else can I start but with Thor by Walter Simonson? Oh my goodness, stick around and I'll explain to you why this book deserves a prominent spot on your bookshelf. Let's do this. And welcome back everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I truly appreciate it. Please hit that like button if you like this video and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more of my content in the future. I'm gonna have a lot more beta reviews coming up. Let's take a look at this though. Thor by Walt Simonson. We're looking at 1200 pages. It's 1,192 to be exact of complete Thor goodness. It collects Thor 337 through 355, 357 through 396, 371 through 382, and the four-part Balder the Brave miniseries. It's got the first appearance of my man, Beta Ray Bill, with his hammer Stormbreaker. Walt Simonson's artwork is in here, and he is just amazing. His artwork is just gorgeous. However, it has been slightly altered. They redid the art. They remastered the coloring, actually, and I shouldn't say the art. They remastered the coloring. Steve Olaf uh, did the coloring, and from what I've heard, some people aren't really a big fan of it. The reason being they're true to the original, which I can certainly respect, but take a look at this. Let's take a look at the original comic, and then here's the omnibus version. And as you can see, there is a bit of a difference here. And in my opinion, I prefer the omnibus, the oversized artwork, the beautiful white pages, and even the adjusted coloring, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, but again, I can understand why people like and prefer the original release. And that leads us to story time. It's story time, folks. Yes, a little bit of a backstory. Thor was one of the very first comics I started collecting. And everywhere I went, when I started talking Thor to, to people that collected comics, I constantly was told about how good the Thor Simonson run is. And to this day, it's still held up as one of the best, if not the best, Thor runs of all time. Donny Cates is giving him a run for his money though. Check out the current release, it's pretty good. So when I first got into collecting Omnis, and I heard that they had a Walt Simonson Thor Omnibus, I was sold. It was one of the very first books I bought. And finally, I could read in full the entire run by Walt Simonson. And it's got some of the best story arcs ever there i could just go on and on about this book i mean I, i'm st take a look at the runtime of this video it might be four hours long so before i even read this book i was sold i knew that it was a must read thor run and it's a must read thor run you've got so many great stories collected let's dig in and get a little bit deeper into these stories but there's going to be some spoilers, so if you don't want this spoiled for you, go ahead and click on one of my other videos and go check one of those out. But for those that don't mind if it gets spoiled or have already read it, let's really dig into this book. So the omnibus starts with Thor 337, which is the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. And take a look at this cover. One of my favorite covers of all time. Look at how the series starts here. There's this galaxy that explodes and an ominous figure that's later revealed to be Surtur. He's collecting the remnants of this destroyed galaxy and he eventually uses this ingot to make his sword to bring destruction to Asgard, or so he hopes. Every few issues, you see a little bit of the story of Surtur and how he's building the sword and how doom is coming. It's, it's just fantastic. But we get to Beta Ray Bill and he crosses paths with Thor and they go toe to toe. Thor ends up dropping Mjolnir. And this is when Thor and Mjolnir were like bonded. And if he dropped it, the hammer turned into a walking stick and Thor would turn into his mortal form. Well... Beta Ray Bill picks up the staff and it turns into Mjolnir and he's like, damn, this is a formidable weapon, you know? So he's like, I need the hammer to go save my people. And Odin's like, well, you know, Thor's supposed to have this hammer, but you're obviously worthy. Let's settle this to a fight to the death. Winner take all. You know, with such high stakes, that's what we're going to have to do. So they go out of Asgard battling to the death. And turns out our boy Beta Ray Bill actually uh, seems to take it. Uh, looks like... Beta Ray Bill takes uh takes Thor out here. And but Thor, you know, Thor's not gonna die, obviously. I mean, spoiler. <laughs> and it turns out that Bill's like, I can't kill him. 
and he ends up bringing him back to Asgard. And Odin's like, you know, I made a mistake having you guys fight to the death. As a reward, I'm going to give you your own hammer. It's a duh, we have Stormbreaker. And that's how Bill gets Stormbreaker. It's just fantastic. I'm really glossing over a lot of the, the features here, but I just love this story. I, I just love Beta Ray Bill thinking, you know, when he's first checking out the hammer, how he throws it and it comes back to his hand. And it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. If you haven't read this book, definitely go out and do yourself a favor. Check out these three issues, 337, 338, 339. Just awesome. So that's definitely one of my favorite parts. And in all of these books that you see here behind me, those few issues are probably what, definitely one of my all-time favorites. Just just so good, so entertaining. I, I absolutely enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole series. I'm just reading through it. And I remember, we'll, we'll go back to a little bit of a story time here. It's story time, folks. I remember talking to a buddy of mine from work about these books after I'd read them and, you know, talking about a few scenes uh, in the comics that I liked. And this was before I had seen Thor Ragnarok. So Thor Ragnarok spoilers here if you haven't seen that movie. But a couple of scenes that I had mentioned was when... Thor threw his hammer and then grabs Loki by the throat. And in the comics, he's like, you need to remove this curse from me. Otherwise, you know what happens when my hammer comes back. Your head is where the hammer is going to be. And Chris Platt, there goes Loki. So sure enough, Loki drops the curse. And also the final stand of Executioner. Now, I had always thought Executioner was a fantastic villain. Just I thought he was perfect to fight Thor. You know, he had the axe and he was just the strong badass, you know, great villain for Thor. Just perfect. And, but when I saw the issue with Executioner's Last Stand, complete with the M16s, just like in the movie, if you like Thor Ragnarok, you're probably going to like a few parts of this book. That's for sure. And Thor faces some serious opponents in this book. You know, not just Executioner and Loki and Beta Ray Bill. You know, he's not really an opponent. But... So one of the big fights that he has is against Hela and Hela messes Thor up badly, messes him up so badly that Thor has to don this special suit of armor. She gives him this deadly curse where his bones are like glass and they'll just, they'll break and will never heal. So Thor has to forge this special suit of armor and that's a story on its own. But when, oh my, take a look at this. This could be my favorite version of all time of the God of Thunder. I mean, I just love the armor. As you may know, I'm a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons. So the armor and the weapon and, you know, Thor is so much like a paladin, my favorite class. Just absolutely love this part of the story. I mean, just look at this armor. But I have to say the most epic battle in the entire omnibus is Thor's fight with the Midgard Serpent. It might be tied with his battle with Surtur. Surtur absolutely crushes him. Oh, <laughs> take a look at this shot. Or, That's not good, Thor. It's not good at all. But when Thor fights the Midgard Serpent, oh man. Like the Midgard Serpent is supposed to be a serpent that can wrap itself around the entire planet. So I remember reading Walt Simonson and he mentioned like, how do you draw this? Like, how do you make a battle so epic like this? Well, he decided to make every single panel a splash page. Every single page in this comic, full-sized artwork. And not only that, he always has the Midgard Serpent going way into the background and then out of view just to represent just how massive this creature is and what a fight thor versus the midgard serpent unbelievable just epic they don't get much more epic than this unreal and that's just a few of the stories that I like. And again, I could go on and on. I could go page by page through this book. I'm really tempted to. I love the book that much. I'm such a huge fan. In fact, uh, I actually recently changed my online handle. It was Magic the Gathering related. Prior to that, Dungeons and Dragons related. But after reading Thor by Walter Simonson, I decided, you know, I'm I'm just going to change my online handle to Beta Ray Jim. Beta Ray Bill, man, such a great character. Thor, one of my favorites of all time. I could not do this book justice by just flipping through it on a YouTube video. Check out the book. Go read it. It's absolutely incredible. And be sure to check out my future videos. I've got a lot more Beta Ray views coming up. I've got to do that room tour. 
looking forward to that. Uh, also have a new video coming out soon. This will probably be my next video coming out. The top five mistakes I made when I started collecting Omnis. So be sure to check that one out if you're thinking about getting into the Omnibus game. And thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate you watching through the whole thing. Be sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe, support the channel. New channel here, just trying out, you know, a few things. I really hope you like the beta reviews. There's more to come in the future and I'll see you then.